So my boy Mace, he has finally released his newest, oh wait, I mean Merce. My boy Merce, you know, they kind of have similar spelling, have finally released his newest album, A Strange Journey Into the Unimaginable, and I checked it out. And for all of you who need to be educated on who Merce is, it's of course a MC who's on the show that kind of seems like a mixture by the title of WWE and rap music because it's called Hip Hop DX. Yeah. So, yeah. But he's also, of course, a Los Angeles MC coming from California who been talented and well acclaimed under the underground and really been a gift to uh, our generation of hip-hop, if you ask me. So, let's get into his track listing. Now, of course, Merce, he started out this album strong with the song Unimaginable. One of the best album openers ever. I swear to you, I'm not exaggerating. Unimaginable have him talking about how if his tears was made out of diamonds, would it be acceptable for him to cry? Because men are not supposed to cry in public. And he used this whole ideas of tears turning into diamonds, as in he's going to cry out a chain. And that he did not laugh at Tyreek from Fast and Furious because when he almost lost his son, he cried for almost a year. And then... He found another fiance. Of course, they were going to have a son, but then the little boy died, like through a miscarriage. And just overall, just damn outright sad. And I'm telling you, if Merce kept this personal intensity and utter travelings into his personal life, like this all throughout the album. The album would have been easily a 9 or a 10 from me. Uh, one of my first, uh, the first 10s I would ever give out. But no, you have the next track, Melancholy, which Merce kind of humble brags about how he's depressed, like he's a fucking emo and stuff like that. And I really hate when people really humble brag about how they deserve depression, basically, because their life is hard, like yada, yada, yada. I mean, just just the ego of emos just kind of rubs me the wrong way. And then you have the next track, which is Midtown, where he pretty much explains himself as a kid and how he wasn't born into this gangster life and just pretty much did not like it that much. And his outro is pretty much the length of a third verse where he says that he's not a thug, a hoodlum, a gangster, and stuff like that, which is a little strange because all throughout this album, he kind of paints himself as a West Coast G. I mean, on a track like Same Way, he pretty much says that he was too hood for a party. And also, Same Way kind of has this thing where he, basically the whole summary of the song is that if you hate, he'll hate harder. If you dislike him, he'll dislike you harder, which, you know, I, I guess that's, I guess that's karma somehow. And, you know, Tech 9 who's the head of Strange Music, he was pretty good on this track. On the song, like, Powerful, he, of course, explains that in his younger days, he used to read books on Black Panthers and really was into the ideology. And also, he used to listen to Public Enemy, NWA, uh, Ice Cube, Ice-T, Cop Killers, which was Body Count. And, you know, just a lot of uh, fuck the police references that I'm thinking of. And I really like the spoken poetry at the end, which was very beautiful and lovely. Like the line where he says it's a paradox of knowing too much but not knowing enough. I thought that was genius. Also, I thought it was interesting that Merce still stands for the flag. I guess he's not one of those Colin Kaepernick types of fellas 
But one of the things I can't really stand is G Lollipop, which sounds like he heard Little Wayne's Lollipop and say, gee, I could I could really like play on that pun. You know, your girl has a sweet tooth and I have a G Lollipop. Like, come on, man. Just just the whole idea of uh, your dick being representative of by candy is a little too sweet for me. But the features definitely saved this album. Like, I like the line that um, was like, uh, you had to toss salad for a salary. And the, also the line, a four-door a four door escort with escorts. Like, I thought that that was a pretty nice song. Oh, yeah. And the song, Superhero Pool Party, is a little bit bizarre. Because he tells this as a bedtime story to his child, but it seems a little bit inappropriate, especially when he had the whole line, Starfire was topless, and he mentioned pornos. I'm like, damn, kid, no wonder your kids was tooken. This is some very fucked up stuff to tell your kid. Like, what is this, the birds and the bees story, except hip-hop version? Come on, man, that's a little bit too explicit for a child, don't you think? Oh, yeah, and another thing, Marty and Doc are not, like, superheroes, so I don't understand why they were mentioned. Um, Static Shock in water doesn't really pan out well since he's made of lightning, and, you know, lightning and water doesn't really mix that much. The Professor X fell out of wheelchair and nobody was there to help him line seems a little bit bizarre. But I do like the Marvel Makes Better Movies line, which was pretty, pretty nice. But I am perplexed at why he said F Spider-Man and Black Panther. Like, really? Black Panther is like one of the highest grossing superhero movies. And it kind of starts like a little bit of a pseudo movement right now. I don't know why you would even say that. A little bit odd. I mean, how many black superheroes do your child has to look at? A little bit strange that you would do that. The next two tracks talk about, like, substance abuse, but it's a little bit dull with me. Like, I like the whole uh, rap karma reference about girls who wouldn't really mess with him on whiskey. But I'm a little bit perplexed at Lean Story. Like, let me get this straight. You, The first time you got... Like, high on lean, you kind of just fell off the stage and got into a fight. Like, that's a little bit odd that you would even, like, I guess that the lean caused you to fall off stage. But then you say that you fought somebody, like, because somebody was stepped on your shoes. So you went from little Xan, like, talking against drugs to, like, uh, the guy from, um do the right thing when the white guy stepped on his shoes like you went from that a little odd like uh, jump off point and also I like the Pimp C uh, reference when Pimp C was still alive but I'm a little bit perplexed at why this song was had a jazzy sample when it's talking about lean and it mentioned Pimp C wouldn't it make more sense if it had a chopped and screwed sound since you're mentioning lean Pimp C and Houston a little bit odd. One of my favorite tracks is uh, Lo-Fi Night, which is a pretty nice track. On the song Lo-Fi Nights, you know, I like the whole idea of you're always bigger than your problems. The whole idea that God is bigger than uh, my bio, uh, your biology. And also the idea that or he did a pun where he said, only God can judge me, so I answer my criticism with songs. Like, I thought that that was a nice songs book reference, and I really like it. It was pretty tight. So Close So Far was a pretty nice song. You know, I like the whole idea of having the same Wi-Fi but different connections. And I like, uh, he mentioned that, he said his love was too pure for contraceptives. You know, I thought that line was pretty nice. Also, when it comes to, like, the term that he had a baby. I don't know which baby was it. Like, the um, 
like the stillborn baby or the alive baby, either way, um, you know, pretty nice reference to how they were born, they were, hey, oh yes, I also like the line where he says, two different affections keep us in opposite directions, like, that, uh, that speaks to so much to people who have different careers and different um, interests and how it kind of grows them apart. I thought that that was a pretty nice reference. The song Celebrate um, is when he romance or um, revisit the whole life he had when he was younger, how he was traveling to West LA just to see a girl and skateboard and how he sold dope and how he listened to Far Side, Snoop Dogg, and Daylight Soul, which is a pretty nice mix. Speaking of Snoop Dogg, I need to check out that new gospel album. Uh, Mickey Fats, uh, you know, um, told me it was nice. So, yeah. Um, also, on the song Vows and on the song God is, God is the Greatest, on the song Vows, I like how he does the whole reference to fake leather because he's a vegetarian. I thought that that was nice. I like the whole reference to Black Sheep. You know, I wish he mentioned them on a previous track, but he referenced Choice is Yours, which I thought was pretty nice. Also, on the song, he calls himself or reference himself as a crip which kind of makes me think he's flexing because earlier on the album, he acted like he uh, wasn't in any type of gang banging on the song Midtown. So I really didn't like that. And also, God is the greatest. I thought that he would uh, like revisit the whole idea of God in a passionate and emotional way as he did on Unimaginable. But no, I, I kind of think he was talking about himself. And he does his little repeating thing where he says, gang banging, gang banging, gang banging. And just the dreadlocks, dreadlocks, dreadlocks. And just keep on having these repeated phrases like he's doing like a Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice chant. I didn't really feel it. So overall about this album, I kind of wish it delved deep into his personal life like the song Unimaginable did. Because overall, it started becoming stale and homogenous with just pretty much mainstream uh, hip hop, especially of the West Coast variety. And I'm going to give this album a seven. You know, he's pretty cool on Hip Hop DX. Check him out. And that's my review. Uh, please like, subscribe, share the channel. And I'm out, guys. How did you feel about this review? Do, 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 do.